Hey everyone, Vinayak here. Today we are checking out a 3D printer by Flying Bear and this model is called the Ghost 6 and it's an FDM 3D printer. Let's unbox, set it up and check it out. Today we are unboxing the Flying Bear Ghost 6 a FDM 3D printer. Let's see what all we get in the box. First off, we find the printer hood which helps keep the temperature more consistent within the printer. Here's a flyer with Flying Bear's social media links. And here's the printer. I'm looking for the best way to get the printer out of the box. I thought of tilting the box sideways first and getting it out. But the easiest method was just to pull the printer out from the top. Lucky, it's mostly put together with only a few parts to be added on. Get all the foam out. It's well protected with individual pieces for each section. Here's the acrylic front door to the printer. The printer comes with a tiny roll of filament, enough to get us started and test the printer. A USB-A to USB-B cable is provided for connected printing. These are the tools, screws and we have an extra nozzle included too. Nice. Other accessories and tools included are zip ties, scraper, a cutter, tweezers, screwdriver and a nozzle cleaning needle. Here's the filament guide and this also includes the filament detection sensor. These are the screws for the door and also included is the handle. Power cord, it has flat pins so you might need a converter. Filament holder, it unscrews like this to ease installation onto the printer. Teflon tube which guides the filament into the extruder. This is the extruder motor and here's the manual which is in Russian. Thank god for Google Translate, if not I would not be able to make head or tail of this. Let's start setting up the printer, first with the acrylic door. Screw the door onto the hinges provided onto the printer. Add the knob and the door is done. The magnet keeps the door shut nice and tight. Now for the extruder motor. We need to align the filament feed with the lower hot end. And this connector goes here. Add the screws on two sides to secure it in place. Done. Now for the teflon tube. Just push it in. Secure the wires using the provided zip ties. This little piece is used to guide the teflon tube into the filament holder, which I am installing next. You need to install the screws from within the printer and insert the teflon tube into the holder. Guide the sensor wire out through this hole and make sure to fasten it to the printer body using the clip provided. Attach the cable to the filament runout sensor. Remove the protective sheet of the print bed by clipping off the zip ties. The bed is made of carbon random glass and it has a build volume of 255 by 210 by 210 millimeters. Here are the dual extruders, cooling fan, hot end and nozzle. Make sure to set the correct voltage for your country. Mine is 230 volts. There's even Wi-Fi connectivity support. I will have to see how to set it up. There, the printer is ready. I was surprised how easy it was to put together once I got a knack of what goes where. Looks really nice. It has a core XY structure with linear rods. The printer is supposed to also have flame detection and the machine will automatically sound the alarm and cut off power if a fire occurs. The hot end can heat up up to 260 degrees Celsius, which makes it capable of working with ABS. Here's the power port. Plug in and turn the printer on. There are LEDs within which lights up the inside of the printer. The printer boots up and we are greeted by a colourful interface. The interface is quite simple. First is the manual temp settings for hot end and the hot bed and also preset values for PLA and ABS can be found below. Move options allow us to manually move the extruder and also set it to move home. We can also disable the stepper motors here. Print option to see the files available on the memory card and initiate a print. Filament option to help feed the filament into the nozzle, basically to set up new filament. Tools, first is the bed leveling as this printer doesn't have auto bed leveling. End stop to see if all the end stop switches are working and also activate deactivate filament detection and also the flame sensor. Temp settings where we set the default temps for PLA and ABS which is reflected in the hot end and the bed. Voice option to activate or deactivate printer sounds. Wi-Fi connect the printer to your local Wi-Fi to remotely activate printing. I connected it to my Wi-Fi and I get an IP address but is still not detected by QRAM even though I installed the plugin. 
we can set the printer language from here. Advanced options are turning the LEDs with an on or off, turn off rear fan and also the flame alarm. And finally, about printer which displays the printer model, specifications and who to contact for customer support. Here's the PLA filament roll provided with the printer. Run it through the filament runout sensor. We can see the blue light here whenever the filament is within. That indicates that the filament is present. The runout sensor would automatically pause the printer when out of filament or the filament breaks. Now push it through the guide and all the way through to the extruder. We need something to print and the box comes with a micro SD card included which is within the reader. Remove the card and install it into the printer. Let's install the top. It has 4 pegs which needs to be inserted into each of these holes on the printer. The GO6 doesn't have auto bed leveling so it requires us to use the old fashioned corner leveling method. Initiate bed leveling using the menu and using a sheet of paper check for appropriate resistance to know if it's level. Check out my bed leveling video here. Now to feed the filament through the extruder using the on screen controls. Keep tapping on the down arrow until we see the filament come through. We can see the big gears rotating here pulling the filament in. Filament is now visible and now the printer is ready. I am printing a sample model present on the micro SD card. Wow it prints really fast and with a speed of 150mm per second it has to be. This video was recorded using an IP camera as I can't run my DSLR for that long. The print is done and oh it comes off the bed so easily. It has printed well and is structurally strong too. I wanted to make sure if a standard filament roll would fit on this holder and we have ample space under for movement. Also I seem to have forgotten to remove the rear film off the acrylic door. It's actually transparent and this is how it looks. Ok now I really like this printer, it's easy to put together as it comes mostly assembled. Print speed is also quite good and the dual extruder makes sure there is no filament skipping when printing which is important for consistent lines. The dual active fans also do their job of making sure that the model cools down fast enough to keep its shape. The touchscreen interface is quite intuitive and it should not take time to understand the options if you have 3D printed before. First time hobbyist, make sure to go through the manual preferably one in the language of your choice. I would have liked Flying Bear to have included an online version of the manual but I did find one after I put the whole thing together. Fire detection is present, god forbid that happens but most printers nowadays have multiple fail safes so thermal runaway is not common but the feature being present is a plus. The semi enclosed design is a plus for ABS printing which needs the ambient air temperature to stay more consistent so the top hood and the plexiglass door helps. I tried connecting via Wi-Fi but I couldn't get it to work via Ultimaker Cura 5.2.2. I've seen the price of the printer between 270 to 370 US dollars on multiple sites and if you can find it for around 300 dollars the price is quite competitive. But do note there is customs duty to be paid if importing to India. At this price point it's a good printer and you won't be disappointed picking one up especially if you're just starting out into 3D printing. Do you have a 3D printer at home? Which one and why did you pick that certain model? Make sure to comment below. So that was the video. Make sure to like, subscribe and also hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are added. Thank you for watching and see you all next time.